in the pursuit of truth, Dali, Chapter Five, Read an Expert. Francis Bacon said, "Knowledge is power." The mission of a school is to impart knowledge. A student performing well academically is often rewarded. This does not mean he is necessarily a person with good character, but that was a substantively different matter. Being able to acquire knowledge at school is a requisite for a good student. This is a common sense. But it was seriously challenged and vilified in some schools in 1964 Shanghai, acknowledging the power of knowledge per se became a political liability. The high school D.R. attended had a reputation for academic excellence. It was one of the two premium schools in a district. With high concentration of intellectual families, year after year, over seventy percent of the graduates were admitted into college. The strength of the faculty was weakened during the 1957 campaign, as a number of teachers were labeled as rightists and removed from their teaching posts. Still, a long tradition. Was hard to break, and the quality of education was basically maintained. In the first year of his senior high, there was actually a course entitled Philosophy, taught by a young and bright teacher, who a few years later committed suicide during the Cultural Revolution. The textbook was a compilation of old Soviet pamphlets. In the Mao's philosophical essays, you may agree or disagree with its content, but the textbook was done professionally, and so was the delivery of the message by the teacher. By the second year, it changed. The theory of class struggle became the sole topic of the course. There was no formal textbook. Only makeshift teaching material, and the course was officially renamed politics. For Dr., there was a direct and a personal consequence. His continuous straight A record was then broken, because the subject of politics was a political evaluation under the disguise as a subject of education. There was no formal examination on the subject, but by the end of the semester, a grade for politics would show on the report card. What you see is what you get, and you don't ask why. The B grade was Dr.'s destiny, like most of other students. In the third year, the political instructor just came in the classroom. During the official class time, completely disregarded any planned curriculum and went directly into brainwashing. In the subject of political science, any elements of scientific discipline had faded into oblivion. Then more changes followed, subtly or explicitly. The school took. Affirmative actions to enroll large numbers of students from other districts with favorable family political background. Among the teaching staff, those political activists who were weak in academic credentials but skillful in political manipulation gradually took control of the decision making. It happened one day when the students assembled in the auditorium. The school principal, a revered educator, were sitting right there on the stage. Students were expecting a speech by him about teaching and learning, but the school's governing body instead decided 
to assign him a short talk on the public hygiene while waiting for the long political lecture. The school's party secretary finally showed up behind the podium. Her speech was usually boring, delivered in a monotonous tone and full of political cliché. But that day, she was animated and launched a new and amazing critique the DR had not heard before. It was directed at the perceived bourgeois ideological trend among the students. Many of you are only bookworms, only interested in books written by those already dead and are content with doing this until you die. The tone was absolutely mean. That is simply not true. DR sitting there listening almost was tempted to shout out his disagreement. You know how much time every day after class we have to stay for extra political education. We go to work in a nearby factory half a day every week and to the countryside for farm work two weeks a semester. Most of us barely have enough time to do homework. DR shared his disgust with JL. We also actively participate in sports, choir, and all sorts of extracurricular activities. This is hardly like worms only eating books. JL felt DR's frustration and tried to cheer him up. Of course, we have to learn from the dead. Newton, Faraday, Kepler, none of them is still alive. Then his voice turned serious. JL offered his advice to his high school teenage friend. Be careful what you say. DR always respected JL, but this time he did not learn his words by heart. In the school, an open debate was going on about the relations of red and expert. The phrase is a literal translation of a political jargon prevalent in 1950s and 1960s China. There were two basic requirements a person had to meet to become an effective contributor to the society. The first was the right political consciousness, such as being loyal to the party and a social cause. This was called being read. The second requirement was the knowledge and the necessary skill needed for the job. This was called being an expert. That knowledge is power is a wrong slogan. One student activist said, a magazine in the Soviet Union uses this slogan as its title. So it is a revisionist idea. The word is from Francis Bacon, DR pointed out. Then it's a Western bourgeois ideology as well. Let us get back to the topic of the debate, DR said. The subject is whether knowledge is power. I think it is. If you disagree, you have to argue knowledge is powerless. What invented a steam engine only to serve the capitalists to exploit the working class? But that is a different subject, DR refuted. You are arguing if his knowledge served a good purpose, but you are not proving his knowledge has no power. The steam engine in the locomotive pulls the heavy carriages forward. To make an analogy, DR continued, read an expert is like the value of a mathematical number. Knowledge is that absolute value, and its political purpose can be treated as the plus and the minus symbols. The notion that knowledge has intrinsic value really ticked off some of the activists, but they could not come up with an effective rebuttal.
So the whole thing was put on a shelf. DR felt some craziness in the left activist's argument. It was the party slogan, be red and expert. And his opponents did not quite understand what the word and meant. Life went on for the moment. It was still pre-cultural revolution time. Things were unpleasant, but had not reached the point of madness yet. The school had to teach, in spite of constant political interference. The tradition of high academic standards was still alive, and the coursework remained demanding. Years later, when DR went to study in the U.S., he came to realize the eminent quality of the science and the math curriculum of his high school. They were, perhaps, at or above the sophomore level of the science major in many U.S. colleges. The load of homework and the routine exams were so challenging that even students at high proficiency level had to strive to succeed. No one could just cruise along. A single neglect or a moment of laziness would throw good students off balance in those unannounced quizzes. DR was good at learning from minor setbacks and usually did exceedingly well in the finals when they really counted. Those who were enrolled based on quota, however, were facing a dilemma. On the one hand, the burden of courses weighed heavily on them and hurt their morale and self-respect. On the other hand, it was imperative for the party leadership in the school to make sure that none of them would actually fail. The official plan was to turn those red students into experts. It is a political task, the party secretary announced. DR was pretty cool about this, and was even enthused. Without knowledge, socialist construction would just be empty talk. He volunteered and was assigned a study partner whom he coached. He would be helping with physics and English. It is always difficult to master any subject, but even more so for physics than the others. Classic physics courses, as taught in high school, did not require a lot of memorization or complicated mathematical calculations, but it demanded accurate understanding of the underlying concepts, which can be elusive. He tried a few methods, including rehashing the teacher's lecture, explaining his own understanding of physics lessons, and worked together with the tutee on some questions that he thought eventually might turn out in the examination paper. As to English, there was a unique challenge for that particular high school, as many students were from other less prestigious junior high schools where little English was ever taught. The entrance exam to senior high did not include English. Consequently, there was a huge gap of the English levels between the two camps, those who started their study from the beginning of the junior high in the same school, and those who did not. DR did not fully appreciate the severity of the problems until he got into the middle of this special mission. There were only written tests for English. DR figured if one could memorize most of the words and get the spellings right, that would be half the work. Then, after some grammar drill, a passing grade could be within reach. He suggested at least learning to turn a decorative sentence into an interrogative sentence 
by adding the auxiliary verbs such as do or does at the beginning and a question mark at the end. Eventually, everybody passed. Those academically challenged got a C. Remember that D was a failing grade according to the Soviet system, which was still used in China. Everybody deserved some credit the student's effort, the coach's help, and of course, the teacher's contribution. They taught diligently and gave exams that were compatible with the level of the students. By the end of the term, Every student got his or her report card. There was no announcement of the top performance in any subjects. Perhaps out of fear of spoiling some and offending the others. Political correctness is not a US only phenomenon, it is ubiquitous. By hook or by crook, the school authority. Try to turn many red into expert. But what would they do to turn the expert and everybody else into red? The answer was political indoctrination and ideology remoding. Communists are supposed to be atheists, but the pervading practice of the organized political meetings in DR's high school. Indicated otherwise, very much like religious ritual. It usually started from the participants soul searching by singing the tune of self incrimination. I'm nothing if not for the party, and I owe everything I have to Chairman Mao. This applies to students. Of all family class background. In addition, those from the working class families would say something like, I do not live up to the party's expectation. I have been influenced by the bourgeois ideology, and I do not show a firm proletarian standpoint to resist it. I will study hard Chairman Mao's work and improve. Sometimes it would add to the drama if the good performers spoke emotionally with tears in their eyes. For those from non working class families, it usually started with condemnation of their own parents and the gratitude to the party and the Chairman Mao's teachings that saved their soul. For example, regrettably, My bourgeois inclination has been so stubborn that I must make a lifetime commitment to remoting my ideology. The vows could be damn serious and determined, especially when they were uttered between the clenched teeth. The school did not formally teach drama, but quite a few students acquired some. Stanislavski art in real life and faithfully followed the Darwin's doctrine of the survival of the fittest. Nevertheless, this was not DR's cup of tea. He liked honest and independent thinking. All those were political hyperbole in utterly disgusting display. When it was repeated week after week, month after month, it could really drive you crazy. But like it or not, that was the reality everybody was facing, and there was not much you could do about it. As they say in French, c'est la vie. The further development of this hysterical brainwashing will inevitably escalate. To persecution. How did DR's high school life end? What was the fate of many innocent young students? Please listen to the subsequent chapter six Rectification Movement in the High School. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and liking.